Hi everybody! Hello Buster! How are you doing Buster? I am excellent. Kapla. Uh, uh, we are collaborating. We are collaborating. We've been talking about it for, for a long time. You're a patron and you're a Twitch streamer and we're collaborating on a video. Our top five favorite changes from the books. A Song of Ice and Fire into the show. A Game of Thrones. So Buster, tell me a little bit about your uh, Twitch channel and at the end we can talk about it some more. Uh, yeah, I play a game called Star Citizen on Twitch uh, that's in development and uh, my Twitch name is Buster the Destroyer, all one word. So, uh, and I've been doing that for a few months now, so I've been enjoying yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come, and the, the link is in the description, so if you have uh, Twitch, if you're active there, click the link. Buster is awesome. Thank you. She's very funny also. Uh, <laughs> Thanks. So we want to uh, each have our own top five, top five favorite changes from the books. We're going to start off with the fact that they wrote off Lady Stoneheart. That's my fifth <gasps> favorite change. Do you have it on your list? No, yes. I, I don't. <laughs> But I almost picked I almost picked that. But I opted for other things, obviously. But I almost picked that because I, when I read it, I was like, "Yeah, not interested." Felt like it was too tertiary of a story to translate to television. For sure, but even in the books, it wasn't that. I don't know. It was weird. It it felt um, like, "Why are you bringing her back?" I liked it better when she was dead. Yeah, like give the leave the zombie stuff to the White Walkers, right? <laughs> Definitely. Okay, what's your number five? One handed Jamie learning to fight, you know, with brawn instead of ill and pain, like in the books. Because in the books it was Sir Ill and Pain, but of course in the show it was brawn. I just think brawn's a more fleshed out character in the show, obviously. I like Braun better as a character overall. Yeah. I think he's a better character in the show than he generally is in the books. Yes. For sure. And so I think that was a really great showcase, uh, I would imagine, for directors and all the people involved in the writing of that show to really take that character and make him yeah. more lovable and more <laughs> cherished by the fans. Yeah, it, the, the fact that they're doing it together makes it uh, makes us more invested in it than in exactly. the books when it's in pain. There is some allure to it because Jamie can say every, anything and uh, Eden Payne won't repeat it. Exactly, and that was that was the other thing I was going to point out is Ilan can't talk, so Bronze yeah, way more interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's very, but that's a low bar. <laughs> you can talk. You're hired. <laughs> okay, okay. Number four it means that I have three changes that I like like better than this one. The fact that the Hound died or died. Your sister. Your pretty sister. Not uh, in the battle that he had, whatever, in this uh, pub or bar, but in the fight against Brienne. I thought that was a great change because in the books, Brienne, in A Feast for Crows, her storyline, sometimes it's just so boring because you know it's going yeah. nowhere, because you know that Sansa is not where she's looking for. And that climax, I thought, was a great payoff. It, ha it gave us some more time with Arya and the Hound. I always thought that um, Brienne was a, a more interesting character in the, the show. Yeah, in the books, she had like a battle with, with uh, some uh, rogue knights. That was also kind of awesome, but it's better when she fights somebody. When it's somebody of some substance. My number four is the dropping of the young Griff plot. Which plot? I, uh, the young Griff, ah, Varys and Illyrio's yeah, 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 little, yeah, 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 yeah. which I think the fan theory for that is that he's actually a black fire that they're trying to pass off as yeah. Rhaegar's son. But that's just a fan theory. Uh, but, yeah. but I'm just glad that they dropped that whole thing. I don't know. That one always just bored me because it was like, here's this weird threat that might come to fruition one day. Yeah, <laughs> yeah if you want to write 10 books. We don't yeah. have time, George. <laughs> yes, exactly. Like, get, get the plot points. Like, pick the ones you really like. Nice. It's, just get them done. There's so much that you have to cover. It's not uh, so... Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so, yeah. okay. I agree, I agree. Number three. This is something that actually surprised me. 
because I went back and reread it and realized how much better it is in the show. Tyrion's trial, Tyrion's trial. I saved this city and all your worthless lives. I should have let Stannis kill you all. Tyrion! In the show, it's incredible. That's a good one. That's a really good one. Because you were so correct. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I do this for like, a living. Come on. Yeah, I know. So then I went back and, re- and, and reread it. And it's like two pages and not interesting in the books. Yeah. It's not and what, interesting. And the, There's no like this whole father-son dynamic. It's not there in the, in the books almost at all. Do you admit you poisoned the king? No. Of that I'm innocent. I'm guilty of a far more monstrous crime. I'm guilty of being a dwarf. And in the show, it's, it's super climatic. It's, it's like one of the top uh, 10 moments in the show for sure. I demand a trial by combat. Oh yeah, I, I think Tywin and Tyrion's relationship, uh, like the the dynamic of that relationship, obviously not a good one, uh, is a very interesting dynamic that was way more explored in the show, especially Definitely. through that trial. I think that trial, yes, I agree with you. It was only like two pages in the books. It deserved all the time it got in the show. Yeah, we have Absolutely. to give kudos to the actors. Actually, I, uh, I posted a video about that speech with a doctor of rhetoric. So the link is in the description. It's a, yeah, it's a very nice analysis of what was he trying to achieve and with the, with the speech, was he trying to make himself seem not guilty or maybe was he trying to achieve something else? So you go yeah. now, number three. Uh, my number three is a pretty basic one. Um, it's aging up the younger characters, such as ah. the, the baby Starks, Daenerys, Masande, Brienne. I think Brienne was considerably aged up for for the show. I think she's 17 in the books, and Mm. she looks like she's in her 30s in the show. And I thought, and that's just, that's more of a comfort thing for me because there's some, obviously there's some like horrible things that happen to some of these characters. Yeah. And they are way too young to have some of that stuff happen to them. Yeah, it's disturbing. yeah. It, it definitely it's 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 still like some of it's still bothersome, but at the same time, it's a little less makes you feel weird that you're reading or watching it because they're older. You're so right. I think in the show, I read something that he said that they had to from for for all kinds of of legal reasons. But I'm not sure how much you would lose from the story if in the books you would have made them all like two years. Older, so it's not yeah, so it's not like 100 percent like the Middle Ages, whatever. But still, uh, maybe you're not you're cringing a little bit less as you're uh, reading uh, uh, Daenerys yeah. having sex or whatever. It's like no, no, no. Yeah, like what? She's 13 when she got married. Yeah, no. no. Like sorry, yeah. I don't want to see a, a grown woman or at least somewhat of a grown woman get yes. married. <laughs> not not a 13 year old. No. Let's, yes, I agree yeah, with you, both. So. Okay, we are we are so right today. I think we are so right. I know. I, yeah, I think yeah, we're yeah. getting it, man. So, so so let's stay for my number two with Daenerys. I can't believe this is not number one. <laughs> when she releases the Unsullied. Go Aguerris! Because in the books, I don't know if you remember, we know from the get-go that she understands Valyrian and that she speaks Valyrian. So, she, so we know that she knows what's going on. It's funny, I did just reread that the other day, like mm. less than a week ago. So I'm like, oh yeah, I know all about this right now. <laughs> <laughs> and in the show, you, th- you, you don't know what's going on and you have no idea that she's planning anything. You, don't, you can't hear her thoughts. So in the books, it's not that suspenseful. Again, and in the show, the fact that only by the end, she's like, uh, my Valyrian is my mother tongue. Da, 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 da. And then Dracarys, and she told, tells Dan Sully to kill everybody, and even uh, Jora is surprised and Barris is telling me that's top five, I would say, maybe in the entire entire show, when we can give them credit. And obviously, TV has that ability. I mean, as a writer, I mean, you could, he could have gone that route of, but at the same time, I get. I get that he was trying to show how she was working out her cleverness in the book. Like she, that was one of her first true clever moments, I yeah. think. 
And, and so I get the way it was written in the book, but I think the show, mm -hmm. yeah, the show had a really great opportunity to seize upon it in a much smarter way. Yeah, he could have had maybe like a POV, like do this from the point of view of another character. Absolutely, Selmy. yeah. If Selmy got a POV in uh, Dance with Dragons, why not get one uh, earlier? So your number two. My number two is uh, Brienne versus the Hound. <laughs> And it kind of like you talked about, great payoff because they never found each other in the books. That was one of the great fights that could happen in the show because clearly there's like probably, you know, five people we could both name off the top of our head that are great fighters that maybe we'd like see fight somebody else in that same group and that same list. But Brienne versus the Hound was, I totally agree with yours. And since this was sort of mine too. Brian versus Ham was one of the best payoffs that the yeah. show had to offer us because, and, and also the whole scene, like the whole scene with Arya and and how Arya didn't kill him, yeah, and yeah, all yeah. that, and and eventually, obviously, his return. And, I, and of course, that paid off to one of the best scenes ever, which was Brienne and the Hound talking about Arya. And one of my the most sweetest moments in the show to me is when the Hound smiles at the thought that Arya is still alive and kicking and doing uh. her thing. Like, just, oh, I just love, Bri I love the two of them. <laughs> okay, number one. Number, number one, one, for me, is like a general one, making Cersei a major character from the beginning. Like, in the books, you, we only get, like, a POV from, like, in the fourth book. Before that, she's important, but you don't really see anything of her. You don't and see you don't what she's working thoughts. out. Yeah, she's more like a side character that is important, like Tywin. Oh, maybe I should have put here Tywin also, because Tywin is important, but is not a big character in the books. So, I, okay, let's do Cersei and uh, Tywin together. And Cersei and, and Lena Headey, she should get a lot of credit. She's also funny. I'm going to punch her in the face. So that gave us a, a, an opportunity to see her with her son to see her with Robert, to see her do all kinds of stuff, not uh, only from Tyrion's point of view, and really get to know her. Like in the books, you have, it's only when she gets in trouble with a, with a, with a faith, a faith militant that you, that you start mm -hmm. to know what she's thinking. But here you know yeah. her from, uh, from season one. She seems a lot smarter in the show than she is in the books. I feel like Cersei, even in the books, I think, she obviously has her agenda and she wants to achieve that agenda and she does what she can to achieve that agenda. I do think that the show gave us a great opportunity to see all the motivation, all the work that she puts behind those those agendas. And in the show, I think of her as like, like the queen of, of eating souls. I don't know, like she's so much more regal in the show and I think she should be and she knows to be. But in the books, when she gets arrested by the High Sparrow, this is incredible. It's an incredible scene. Incredible scene when she, because she had like this whole plan, right? She sent somebody to snitch on Marjorie, but then he ended up snitching on her. Wow, this was, it was also good in the show, but in the books, it's, it was, oh, I couldn't believe it. Okay, so you're number one. Go ahead, boom. My number one is Tywin at Heron Hall instead of uh, Roose Bolton. Yes. Uninteresting Roose Bolton. Yes, yes, thank you. That's exactly like my whole point with him is like he's uninteresting. He's a weirdo with his leeches yeah. and uh, I love okay, and this is this is something that kind of goes hand in hand with some of the Arya Hound stuff I was saying before. After Arya lost Ned, like she was sort of like always searching for a new surrogate father figure without actually like she wasn't actively searching for one, but she kind of fell in yeah, with some. And so in the show, you know, we had Yorin, and then we had uh, maybe kind of Thoros and Beric, but not really. She didn't like those guys, but eventually the Hound, and then, or in the Tywin was in there actually yeah. somewhere in the middle. Yeah. But Tywin, Tywin, I think gave her more than any of the rest of them outside of the Hound. I think the Hound taught her the harsh realities. I think that Tywin taught her a little bit more about hiding in plain sight because he was the one that pointed out to her in the show, if you want, you know, he pointed out those things like if you want to be, if you're, if you're a highborn girl that wants to pretend she's lowborn, you need to do it better, yeah. you know, and he, I think Tywin and her's relationship, that like they probably had a handful of scenes, really like five to six scenes at the most. All of them good. But those five to six scenes yeah. were so good. And they were, man. 
we got to know Tywin better. We got to learn, yes. you know, and also they had like a great chemistry. It felt really like they liked each other. Oh God, yeah, yeah. The actors themselves obviously worked very well together and very hard on those scenes. That Charles Dance and Maisie Williams nailed those scenes. Definitely, ah. definitely. I can never stop talking about how much I love those moments because he and her. I think, and I think one of my favorite moments between them was when. She, he noted how much she reminded him of Cersei. And I always think that those little moments were just very telling of each character and how she was always like wanting to kill him, but she could never make it happen. And I think she couldn't make it happen because she kind of started mm. to, he started to grow on her. Because remember at the end of the, yeah. that sequence, like when he's leaving, she like runs out, yeah. like she's like a little lost puppy, like, where are you going? Mm. Why are you leaving me? I mean, that showed you how much respect she had for him before they parted ways. And I think... Yeah, I think that was super necessary to to the show, yeah. and I well, I can't get over how great those yeah. scenes were. So definitely, definitely, we would like to hear your top five changes from the books to the show. Mention yes, please in the comments. And what kind of game is this uh, that you're uh, twitching about, Buster? So this is a game that's purely funded by the people who want to play it, and not by a studio. What kind of game is it? What? Uh... It's a space game. It's going to be sort of its own living, breathing game world. There's going to be different like star systems and different like planets and all this stuff. Very open world. And what kind of people do you, do you think would be into it? Who should check it out? If you like Star Trek and you like video games, I think it's a great game for you. I th you know, and if, obviously if you like sci-fi and things like that, it's fun. And I just. I just think anybody looking for a good time for a little while, and especially if you want to play with some friends or you have some friends that already play Star Citizen, it's a great game to try out. And I'm always playing it. I play it three nights a week on my stream, so it's really fun. I like it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Check out the link. Check out the link. And thank you, yes, Buster. Yes, see me. I had a good time. Thank you. Let's do it again. I had a great time. Yeah, let's do yeah, this Yeah, let's again. do it again, we'll, we'll, definitely. We'll, we'll, We'll figure out we'll figure out what we want to do yeah, for the yeah, next yeah. one. Hey, maybe maybe you, you guys can tell us yeah, you what you want to see us talk and about. Once, and once and and I'm gonna say bye, and then I'm gonna tell you I have an idea. <laughs> but first, let's say bye <laughs> to everybody. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to get all our videos, and we'll see you next time. And thank you, patrons, for supporting the channel. Bye, everybody. You have such a way with words. <laughs> I wonder if you'll be as clever when I have your tongue ripped from your throat.